For years, I've had a weird obsession with dust collection. I think mainly because in a small shop, there's still so much unknown. What's the most efficient? What's the best setup out there for a small shop? And it's definitely not a one size fits all approach. I'm in the middle of a massive upgrade, automating my entire dust collection setup, which I'll have a video for down the road once I get all the kinks figured out. But for now, I wanted to just walk through a few things that I did during that setup that may be helpful for everyone, whether you're gonna automate yours or not. In messing with a lot of different setups in my shop, one of the biggest annoyances I had were just the blast gates themselves. Whether it was them clogging up, whether it was leaks with air, a lot of different issues with them just being sturdy or holding up. I tried multiple different solutions, whether it was the plastic blast gates, the aluminum ones, even the aluminum ones that have the anti-clog in them. All three of those have their own pros and cons, and I wanted to find a better solution for both a four inch and a two and a half inch blast gate. The plastic ones are the cheapest of the three, but the pros really stop there. They are obviously less durable and a bit flimsy compared to the aluminum ones. The other major issue with the plastic ones are the end is actually closed up. This seems like a good idea at first as it doesn't allow air to leak out like the aluminum ones do. However, after using it for a while, you will get sawdust stuck in these corners and it won't be able to close the gate all the way, which then causes leaking out the main area instead. The aluminum ones are much stronger, which is nice, these do cost a little more than the plastic ones, but are worth it in my opinion. The other nice thing is that the end is open to allow dust to escape and not build up. The downside there is again because of the large gap, air will leak through when the gates are open. The other downside to both the aluminum ones is there's a lot of play inside for the gate to rattle back and forth. To solve this, they have an indent that forces the gate to one side to help stop the leak. The indent also acts as a stop to prevent you from pulling the gate out on accident. Both of the aluminum gates also have a thumb screw that allows you to adjust and force the gate closer to that same side. However, if it's too tight, it's tough to open, too loose, air will escape. The plastic and the aluminum gate also have minor flaws that don't allow you to open the gate all the way. These gates are made to allow flex hose to clamp around them, so you're already taking your hose from 4 inches down to 3.5, which is a 24% decrease in airflow already. And since you can't open the gate all the way, that adds another 3% on top of that. While that itself may not seem like a huge deal, the bigger issue is the flat surface the air hits, which adds extra friction, therefore reducing airflow even more. The third option is the aluminum gate with the clog proof design. This one has a couple pros over the previous ones, but also some flaws. The pros are it fully opens, so it doesn't lose suction like the previous two do. Second, as the name suggests, it's clog proof, which is a very important feature. The two downsides, however, are it takes up more space, so you can't have anything on either side, which also makes it more difficult to mount it to the wall. And second, it leaks a lot. Because you don't have the indent, like the other aluminum one does on the one side, the gate will leak not only when open, but also when closed. Now, in theory, the suction should help pull it shut and eliminate most of it, but this is also very thin steel, and around the circle, there's not much material there. So this can bend easily over time and will allow the gaps to get even larger, and in my experience with them, that small gap will create a shrill whistle, which gets really annoying. I've seen people make their own custom blast gates because the store-bought ones tend to have these issues. My goal was to take the ones I already had and make them more efficient. So I used the standard aluminum ones, and my goal was to solve three issues with them. First was to remove air leaks from both the inside and on the outside end. Second was to make sure that dust could still escape. And third, that the gate would actually open all the way. To start, I wanted to figure out how I could reduce the amount of play inside these gates. There was at least double the room needed in there for the gate to slide open easily. So when I opened them up, right away I saw a big issue. There are these nubs from where the aluminum is casted. These normally aren't a big issue, but because we want to reduce the space inside here, it's very likely the gate could catch on one of these. So step one was to grind these down. Next, I needed to find a good way to fill the gap. One way you could do it, and it worked well for me the two times I did this, is to cut down 1 16th inch pieces of aluminum and glue them into place. This worked well, it would hold up well long term. However, since it covered part of the hole, I had to either cut them with the hole saw or use an oscillating sander. Because I had to create so many of these, I didn't want to go this route for the entire set. So I looked for an easier option. And that's when I remembered I had a 3D printer. 
Now I know not everyone does, so easily you can go the aluminum bar route and be just fine. However, this was quicker for me, and because it's not structural, it'll hold up just fine. It also allowed me to make a perfect match around the hole and dial in the exact thickness that I wanted. For both of these methods, I used medium Starbond glue to attach them to the gates, which was plenty strong since there wouldn't be a lot of torque on these surfaces. And that brings us to the sponsor of this video, Starbond glue. It's no secret I'm a huge fan of CA glue, and I have been ever since I discovered it a few years back. I use it any chance I can just because of how efficient it is and how quickly it sets so I can move on to the next stage of my project. One of the biggest pain points I had with CA glue was the end clogging up, whether it was from just sitting around or humidity getting inside of it, or I forgot to wipe it at the end, and then I'd have to cut the end off or keep opening the tip, whatever it was, to at some point the end was just basically ruined and I couldn't even use it anymore. When I got to use Starbond for the first time, a couple things stood out to me from the other one I had been using. First, each bottle comes with two nozzles. This is amazing, so if I forget to wipe down the end or put the top in right away and it clogs up, and I've run out of nozzle to cut off at the end, I can just replace it, which is very nice. Secondly, they also come with these micro tip applicators that allow you to get into very hard to reach spaces or do fine work. The glue comes in multiple consistencies as well as clear or dark. I've seen plenty of people use it to fill in knots, which is super helpful. Just put a layer down, spray the activator, wait a minute, put down a second layer, spray some more activator, and then sand it, and it looks great. I use CA glue myself all the time when gluing up wood projects as a temporary clamp while letting the wood glue do its thing long term. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Starbond products shown here, there will be a link in the description below, and you can use the code RINGS to save 10% off, and it also helps support the channel as well. Thank you Starbond for sponsoring this video. Now back to the project. The next step is to allow the gate to fully open. This is extremely simple. We just need to remove the indent in the gate with a hammer and then throw it in the vise to ensure that it's flat. We won't need to raise the gate to the one side anymore because the plastic is already doing that. The only downside is that you can actually pull the gate out now, which won't be an issue for me once I finish up my full automation project. But for those that don't go that route, you can still easily use a thumb screw once you have it in place from falling out. By doing this, the gate opens all the way and no more limiting the airflow. It also allows the piece to go even further in, which ensures no dust will get stuck in there at all. Now, before we assemble the gate back together, since these pieces are gonna be closer together, there naturally would be more friction when you open and close the gates. To help with that, I'm gonna add some lubrication to these gates. Normally, I don't recommend using silicone in a wood shop at all, as it can get on your work and not allow stains or finishes to penetrate the wood properly. However, since this is only going to come in contact with sawdust after you've already cut your piece, it's not a concern at all. Now be sure to allow this to fully dry before using it, otherwise you'll end up with sawdust paste, which will do more harm than good. To finish it off, I'm gonna apply some caulking to the outside edges, just to make sure there's no air leaks out the sides. The less chance of air escaping through here, the better. So far, we've allowed the gate to fully open and we've eliminated the air leaks on the inside. Now we need to figure out how to get the air to stop leaking on the outside when the gate's open, as well allowing sawdust to escape and not clog up inside the gate. We already greatly reduced the air that can escape on the outside by cutting it in half, but we still want to take care of that last little bit. To do this, we're going to take a page out of another YouTuber's book. Learn to DIY posted a video earlier this year that addressed this exact issue with a pretty ingenious solution. That doesn't look the greatest, but it actually works really well. So I'll link that video in the description below, but we're going to tweak it a little bit to make it work even better. The thought here is that when the suction's coming through, the duct tape will suck into the gap, clogging it and sealing it off from the air escaping. When there isn't suction and you close the gate, it will allow any dust to escape out the slot. This may not look pretty, but it's a pretty ingenious solution in my opinion. The only issue I noticed with this was that the tape naturally wanted to stick the flap out and over time it had a hard time staying down when the gate was open. So to fix this, I discovered if you add this little tab up top and fold it back down, it makes the tape naturally want to stay closed, making it closer to the gap to clog it easier, but will still open when the dirt needs to get out. I did find out a few that I didn't make this tab big enough and it wouldn't stay adhered together. In that case, I just added some more Starbond CA glue. Eh? Eh? And that kept it in place moving forward and it worked amazing. Flap stays closed when the gate opens and allows dust to get out when it's closed. Perfect. One thing to note, you'll want to plan which direction the gate will face so the open end of the flap is always facing down or else the dust will just get stuck in the tape. And with that, we're done. I feel these blast gates are so much more efficient 
They slide extremely smooth, no leaks, and they actually open all the way. Now this may seem like a lot of work for some for minimal payout, but my thought was if I can put a little bit of time, a couple hours into this project and never really have to mess with them again, it'd be time well spent. Let me know in the comments below if you've dealt with some of these same issues with your blast gates and dust collection or have found any other solves to make your blast gates even better. So that's going to do it for this video. If you liked what you saw or learned something new, be sure to like the video. If you're new here, be sure to check out other videos on the channel and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when new videos are posted. If you'd like to help support the channel, there'll be a link to my Patreon at the end. To those already members, thank you so much for your support and a special call out to my gold members. As always, thank you guys very much. To everyone, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.